this is the first lecture in Chapter 9, Nervous System for Anatomy and Physics. We're going to be talking about the parts of the nervous system. The first thing you need to know is that nerve cells have a special name that's different from other kinds of cells, and that name is neuron. Um, anytime you see the root ner, N-E-U-R, we're dealing with the nervous system, um, usually the brain or the cells of the nervous system themselves. And there are um, some parts that all neurons have. The first is the cell body, and then there are dendrites and axons. We're gonna spend some more time in a few minutes talking about those, so I'm not gonna focus on them at this point. There are other cells within the nervous system as well. They're called neuroglial. So these cells are basically there to um, provide necessary things for the neurons. The neurons do the work of the cell. They, um, of the nervous system, they're responsible for receiving and sending information. The neuroglial cells give food and structural support for the neurons so that they can do their job. Structural support means that it helps to, these neuroglial cells surround the neuron and help to hold them in place. When you get a bunch of neurons together, for instance, like this, with a whole bunch of neuroglial cells providing support in the area. Um, those big bundles together are called nerves, and that's what we think of as um, the parts of our body that help to detect changes in the environment. Um, the nervous system is organized into two categories, and those two categories are responsible for um, detecting changes in the environment, things like temperature or sound, and then responding to those changes. Um, there are two ways that your body communicates with, in, um, so between, say, the nerves of your hand and the brain, back and forth. So there are electrical messages, just like the wiring in your house uses electrical messages to communicate from the light switch to the light itself, saying time to turn on the light. And there are chemical messengers as well, which we talked about when we um, looked at muscles. We talked about neurotransmitters. Hopefully that term is familiar. Neurotransmitters are the chemicals that help to um, pass messages. When you combine the electrical communication and the chemical communication together, they form um, a system that's called a nerve impulse. And that can be anything from um, detecting sound and sight to um, moving the body to um, sitting upright. All of those things are controlled by nerve impulses. Your nervous system is divided up into two parts. The central nervous system has just the brain and the spinal cord. So kind of it runs, if this is your brain, it runs along the center of the body. So the brain's in the middle of your head and then the spinal cord's in the middle of your vertebral column. And then there's the peripheral nervous system, which is everything else. Peripheral just means around the edges. So these are the nerves that are all around the edges of your body. Um, the jobs of the nervous system, again, um, sensory receptors are, their function is to detect changes using your senses. So it might be light, it might be um, hearing, it might be taste, it might be smell, it could be something like pressure or pain. And then to take that information and pass it back to the brain in the form of a nerve impulse, right? Your brain doesn't actually feel pain when you slam your finger in a door, but rather the finger sends a message to the brain telling you that it hurts, and then your brain processes that. Um, it allows your brain to make decisions, so once we realize that something has happened, you can decide what to do about it. Maybe you can move your finger, or you can create a memory that says, geez, next time don't slam your finger in the door. Um, with a lot of sensory activity, so lots of things that you notice or observe, you both make a decision about it and then that decision takes action. So maybe 
you move away from the door, you remember that it hurt to slam your finger in the door, and then next time you think about not slamming your finger in the door. So a lot of um, parts are involved in your body detecting changes. Anytime the body decides to do something physical um, or alter the inside of the body in order to respond to um, a stimulation, then a message goes to the effector cells. So in this case, the effector cells would be in your finger and it tells the muscles of the finger to pull that finger away. Um, there are two kind of general types of effectors. The first one is those that control the physical, kind of the motor parts of the body, and those are called somatic nerves or the somatic nervous system. Soma means body in Greek. So these are um, any reactions that are controlled by skeletal muscle. So these are usually voluntary, right? You choose to move your finger or you choose to um, go from sitting in a chair to lying on the floor or whatever. But there are also actions that your body takes when it detects changes that um, need to be managed internally. So involuntary actions are controlled by the autonomic nervous system. I know it sounds kind of like automatic, but it's a different word, even though it has basically the same meaning. The autonomic nervous system controls things like your heart rate and your breathing and your water levels. Um, and it does so involuntarily. You don't have to think about it. These reactions are much more heavily involved in homeostasis and keeping your body balanced. Um, so I told you early on that the cells that provide support for the neurons are called neuroglial cells. And some of their jobs, in addition to food, right, they give your body food, they provide physical support, which is what I'm saying here with structural framework. That means they provide um, kind of the shape and the, um, the overall kind of neighborhood of the neurons. But then they also um, have some protective purposes. So they help to make what's called myelin. So in your nerve, let's say these are this is a neuron. Around the neuron, you have this um, kind of fatty, soft layer, and that's the myelin. And the myelin acts like just like the insulation does on an electrical wire. If you've ever seen an electrical wire or an extension cord or you've plugged in a blow dryer, right? There's always this kind of plastic sheath around the wire itself, which provides insulation. It keeps the electricity from leaving the cord and it keeps you safe from touching the electrical cords. Myelin does the same thing for the electrical parts of your body. It provides insulation and it helps to keep that neuron functioning properly. Um, the final, so that was our second job of the neuroglial cells. The third job is to carry out phagocytosis. So this is for um, defense against infection. So if there are um, germs or other harmful agents in the area of the neurons, the neuroglial cells help to defend against that. Um, in the peripheral nervous system, or the part of the body that moves, right? Motor means movement. Um, the neuroglial cells have a specific name called Schwann cells, named for the gentleman who first identified them, but they have the exact same job. They make the myelin sheath just for the cells that tell your body to move specifically. So here you can see the structure of a neuron. This is one single neuron and it has um, very predictable parts. So up at this end, this is called the cell body and it goes all the way here to kind of like that. And it looks sort of, it reminds me sort of of a tree. It's like the trunk of a tree and inside the cell body are all of the parts that we would expect in any cell. There's cytoplasm or, you know, kind of a jelly-like fluid. There's ribosomes and mitochondria and all of those things. There's a very large nucleus because um, neurons have very important jobs. 
Um, and then there are these little branches extending out from the cell body. These are the receptors. These are called dendrites, and that word means branch in um, Greek. So dendrites are the branches that receive information. So whenever your body is getting new information from a different neuron, that message comes here and is delivered to one of these branches and then it can be zipped into the cell body for um, some kind of action to take place. You can see that there are tons of dendrites on each cell body and that's because they're receiving lots and lots of information from a variety of places all at the same time. So there has to be a lot of places for that information to be received. Um, and then Extending off the cell body this way is what is called the axon. I'll write that here in red, the axon. And the axon is like the highway for decisions once they're made. So the dendrites receive information, the cell body makes a decision about that information, and then it transfers the whatever the decision has is that's been made. So maybe it is, you know, move your hand that decision gets transferred all the way down the axon until it reaches the end. This is called the terminal. Terminal means the end, right? The airport terminal is where the um, hallway ends. So at the terminals, that message is then transferred to a chemical, to a neurotransmitter where it goes across the synapse to the next neuron or the next muscle which you learned a little bit about when we talked about muscles. And we'll talk more about that in the coming units. Um, so this is just a continuation of neuron structure. And I told you all of these parts, right? The um, cell body has mitochondria, other parts called microtubules and things like that. Um, the one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the axon. So here's the axon, here's our cell body up here, and then the terminals at the end. All along the axon is myelin, which we talked about just a minute ago. It's this, the insulating sheath that keeps the messages in and helps them to um, be protected. There, um, the sheath, however, is not um, always complete. There are little holes in it. Um, you can think of these sort of like Swiss cheese, right? It's a continuous layer and then every so often you have a hole. Your neurons are the same way. There are little holes in the myelin, and those holes or gaps are called nodes of Ranvier because the man who found them, Mr. Ranvier, that's what he decided to call them, the nodes of Ranvier. And we'll talk more about their function and purpose when we get to um, more specific information about nerve impulses. Okay, so any cell that has a myelin sheath that has that insulating layer is called a myelinated neuron. Um, and any cell that does not, there are lots of kinds of neurons that do not have a myelin sheath and they are therefore called unmyelinated. When there is myelin and the cells are looked at under a microscope or any kind of um, x-ray type thing, um, it looks white, which is why um, a lot of times you'll hear people say the white matter of the brain or the gray matter. Gray matter is for the neurons that do not have a myelin sheath, and so you just see the grayish color of any cell in the body has kind of a grayish hue to it. Um, the thing that's interesting about nerves, or one of many things that are interesting about nerves, is your body has the ability to repair um, minor to medium damage to the peripheral axons, so the um, the nerves around the edges of the body. Your body has absolutely no capacity, however, to repair the nerves of the central nervous system. So that means anything in the spinal cord and any neurons within the brain are, you get one. You get one of each neuron and once it's damaged, it can never be repaired. This is where paralysis comes from. This is where brain injuries, like in the cases of football players, comes from. Once you damage a neuron, it is forever 
damaged. And if it's killed, then it's forever killed. Those can never be repaired, which is why your nervous system is so very important to take care of. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop for right now. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the classifications of neurons in class. Um, but at this point, please come in with three questions related to these notes. Let's try and limit as much as possible the questions that are just random and completely unrelated. I'm happy to answer those too, but you should have three questions that relate to these notes in some way. Anything that's confusing to you or didn't entirely make sense, and then we will talk about it in class. Please also make sure that you write a summary um, from memory as much as possible, and I'll see you soon.